Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, Monday Thursday service, w not service somehow, right? Conversation. Conversation, and we have to do that because in w what we has become abundantly clear through our Holy Week services, especially in our church, is it is so Eucharistic and community focused, especially on Monday mm -hmm. Thursday, and we are unable to do those things. So uh, I know I know for myself. This has been a rough week, uh, trying to sort this out spiritually and, and all this other fun stuff that goes with it. So instead, we're going to use what we can for our Monday mm -hmm. Thursday service and uh, have a very different, almost like a prayerful teaching piece. Does that sound about right? Sounds reasonable. Sounds about right? I mean, for me, what I miss is the intimacy of yes. Monday Thursday that kneeling down and washing feet, the smaller numbers and how we orchestrate all that. Yeah. And for me, that's what draws me in, that intimacy that keeps me there yes. right with Jesus on Good Friday. So we hope that this little conversation, because we can't wash feet and we can't have Eucharist, we hope this little conversation helps to draw you into that intimacy, which is so important in the next three days. And provide a bit of reflection uh, about your own spiritual practices, hopefully for a long term as well. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, we're just going to begin our service on page 304. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, that's perfectly fine. Um, but we're it, using it pretty loosely. We're, we're not using very much, so I would suggest just watch the video for this one. It won't hurt much, right? Right. This is the day that the Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is, the, this is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has already done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and that this last day may reign with him in heaven. O oh God, your son Jesus Christ has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our first reading is from the first letter of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread and when he given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this is a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Judy, since we can't wash feet or hands, uh, we can't eat a meal together, um, we can't do much as far as what we're normally doing. Instead, let's take some time just to reflect on the different ways in which people 
come and receive communion. And, the, and historically, there's been a wide variety a way, a, a, of engaging in the Eucharist or the Last Supper communion. Well, you know what they say, and you have two priests together, you're going to have three opinions. Or seven. Or so, seven. Um, person, so one of the things I like about this is his, historical Eucharistic theology. So for all those academics out there, got some big words. Way back in the way back machine when the reformers were starting, there was a guy that uh, was really influential, at least with Cramner. His guy, this guy was, I think I'm going to say it right, he was a Swiss reformer named Hul Hulrich Zwingli. Zwingli is the guy mm -hmm. that I remember. And this guy was very... And his partner Melanchthon. Oh, yeah. See? We're smart. Now, when we get into this, the basic tenets, you can break, they have a huge dissertations on how these things operate. But for Zwingli, the words remembrance and obedience were paramount. So for Zwingli, it didn't matter how, what you were eating or whatever. It mattered in the so much that you were obeying God and what you're supposed to do and that we were doing this as an active remembrance never to forget Jesus and the Last Supper. So for Zwingli... All this talk about transubstantiation or the spiritual presence, and that, that kind of got pushed off to the side for him. It was a memorial potluck. Yeah, a memor like I wouldn't have gone to potluck, but okay, it was a memorial potluck, and that's what we do, and we do that until Jesus comes back, right? So that was, mm -hmm. that was a reformed new thought at the time. Then there was this, we move forward a little, not too far, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And I think we get into the more spiritual end, we'll say, this is, we move forward into the Anabaptists, and they get into this weird, uh, I say, shouldn't say weird, but they kind of take the other end of that. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? They kind of go and say, I think it's the Anabaptist, a little rusty. And instead of saying, this is only remembrance and obedience, this is about God's overflowing grace and spiritual unity, and it's all spiritual that's in front of you. So if you had concrete elements with Zwingli, you jump down to the other end of the spectrum, and it's all spiritual and metaphysical and mystical. Sort of a subjective real presence. It's the body of Christ if I recognize the body of Christ in the bread and the wine, but in and of itself. Right. There is nothing special. It's about what I recognize. Right. Is that, that's the Calvinist kind of yeah, approach. Yeah, it's kind of in there. It's and they, not Anabaptist, it's, but it's Calvinist. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in there. And amazingly, both of these reformers put a lot of demand on the individual believer or faithful person in order to make the effect of the Eucharist viable. So let's jump forward then to Luther. I don't want to jump add, forward. Go he, ahead. Who added another component um, and a doctrine which we understand today as consubstantiation, that as well as being fully bread and wine, if they were here, they would also be fully the body and blood of Christ. So taking together both what is perceived by faith and what is seen with the eyes and smelled with, right. the, with the nose and tasted with the tongue. So it's a both and. So kind of like the, this, now I know, I know, we're going to get a dual nature of Christ stuff, but if Jesus is fully human and fully God at the same time, the same way the wine is fully wine and fully spiritual blood, the same thing with the bread, the body and blood at the that's, same time, right? Yes, that's same the kind, kind of thing. Lutheran thing. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there are some former Catholics in our parishes. Mm -hmm. And transubstantiation pushes it a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. Because that overturns the idea that this is also bread and wine. And it says they are no longer bread and wine, but solely the body and blood of Christ. Somehow in the Eucharistic prayer, we're able to zap something. And confect, no brother, confect. Okay, 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 sure. What, there you go. Zap. So we uh, uh, put that through, and somehow this becomes an effectual presence literally on the table. So now we right? have gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. Yep. There's nothing holy, and there is... Only holy. Only holy. And those are kind of the two edges... Yes. 
of the Anglican understanding of sacraments. So we can't go quite there. We can go pretty close, but we're Anglican, and so we have this great big via media. I mean, I, I personally like the Orthodox understanding yep. that this is an undefined real presence of the li risen and living Lord Jesus Christ in the bread and the wine that are consecrated at communion, but we can't define how. God is so much bigger than our little heads, too, right. even of the greatest theologians. And so I'm just willing to say and happy to say it's the body and blood of Jesus, and I'm not going to get my knickers in a knot about how we understand it. But we know as Anglicans that there's a breadth of understanding. And it's impo I think it's important as well. Absolutely, Judy. I think it's also important that we also acknowledge that there are times when we may be celebrating and feel I need to do this out of obedience and duty, but I'm not feeling overly spiritual. There are other times where I know I've been able to look at that and go, wow, I am so present with God here. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. And all of that happens in one Sunday over another. And it, 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 it's not so much for me a rigid, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. so much as it is, as, as you said, fluid. It's, um, it's a revealed holy mystery for for me it's about humility and service and i look generally at the early service because then there's only one cup and one right plate and this perfect white corporal and i look at the beauty and the simplicity and the perfection and i see heaven and after 34 years of doing this nearly 34 years it never ceases to amaze me, humble me, thrill me. May I submit that it's perfection, heaven, on earth. Yes. Thank you. There we go.
prayers today are found on page 121 of the Book of Alternative Services. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who are poor, persecuted, sick, and all who suffer. For health care workers, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have been injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.